Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond and in this video I'll be doing an unboxing of the Fantasy Series 1 miniatures by Blacklist Games. And this is a core box of miniatures which also has a huge stretch goal box which I will also be unboxing. And currently there is a Kickstarter going on by Blacklist Games for the Lasting Tales uh, role-playing skirmish game. It's a cooperative game for one to five players that uses the miniatures from the series or any miniatures that you have, any kind of a tabletop skirmish Warhammer-like game, but it's fully cooperative. It feels like an RPG, so go and check that out. You can get the Fantasy Series 1 as an add-on as well, as well as the Series 2 uh, Fantasy Series and the Horror Series 1. So if that interests you, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description below or you can click the I in the corner of this video. But for now, let's open up these boxes and see what's inside. All right, so this is the uh, core box of the Fantasy Series 1 miniatures. The 70 in here by Blacklist Miniatures. And the back of the box simply has some of those miniatures in detail and the contents of what you will find inside. So let's open it up. Okay, so in here, there's the first tray here uh, with a nice plastic lid as well to keep everything in place. There's a bunch of monsters in here. So let's start at the bottom here. This is a tiny little kobold. Let's see if that focuses, there we go. So it's a little kobold who has a sling in his right hand and a sword or dagger in the left. And uh, they come on a plain, smooth basis, as you can see. So no sculpted bases, but they're a pretty good detailed quality. As you can see, So yeah, that's a nice little kobold right there. And the um, insert kind of keeps them in place by uh, applying a little bit of pressure to the sides of the bases. So that's good, they won't fall out easily. And uh, if you paint them, you can safely put them in there because there's not a lot of friction here. There's just enough to keep it in place. So there's five of those. Then we have these things, these oozes. So that's pretty cool in a transparent uh, green plastic, which does make it a little bit hard to focus on, but I think it's pretty clear. It's pretty nice. It's kind of like a worm from, uh, it reminds me of the, the monsters from Dreamcatcher with the, uh, the mouth here. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So oozy green slimes, really nice. So there's five of those in here as well. Then we have these, uh, well, they're either gargoyles or, or imps. They're not too big. So I'd, you know, I'd be inclined to say that these are actually like small demons or imps. But of course you can use them for gargoyles as well. A nice detailed chest there. You can uh, see their, their ribs and their abs. And there's some muscularity on the arms and the legs as well. Clawed fingers and feet. Big leathery wings, which you can clearly see on the back here, all the detail. That's cool, nice tail, kind of a scorpion-like tail. They even have the stinger at the end there. That's interesting. So there's five of those in the box. Then we have these worms, which look really cool. They uh, look like they're, you know, burrowing from out of the earth. And this does have a sculpted base, so that's pretty nice. So there's some rocks on the ground there and it's just bursting out and curling in on itself with its mouth open. So that's pretty nice. It has these spiky little 
feet to propel it through the earth. That's really cool. So there's that. Also, five of those. Then we got another mob here, which uh, are the spiders. So these are pretty cool. They have a uh, uh, like a cleft through their their body, which kind of looks like a beetle almost, but it is a spider. It's got the eight legs and the mandibles there. Look at that. Those poison fangs. It's rearing up a bit. That's pretty cool. You get a nice detail. There's even uh, some detail on the bottom there, if you can see that. On their belly. And there's a nice detail on the back as well. All these little pointed protrusions. And even on the legs and the tiny feet there. Cool giant spiders. So again, five. Then we've got these giant rats, which is always something you need in RPGs. The giant rats in the sewers, in the villages that need to be killed. That's pretty cool. Large stain. And as you can see, it's of a pretty sturdy plastic. I can push this and it does move a little, of course, because it's thin, but it's pretty, pretty sturdy, pretty good material. A nice choice of plastic. It keeps the detail uh, visible very nicely and is sturdy enough. Oh, keep focusing. So yeah, it's got its mouth open, the teeth there, plenty of fur detail. You can even see the, the segments in the tail. So yeah, nice looking giant rat. Again, on a very plain base though. So most of these have plain bases. I did like the ooze and the worm who had sculpted bases. So, uh, and then lastly, we've got five of these um, troglodytes, I think these are. They look like troglodytes. Cave dwelling monsters. And you can see plenty of detail on this one. This is a, a relatively big figure. It's, uh, I guess it's slightly bigger than a regular humanoid figure. Long arms, long claws, and some uh, scaled protection on their legs and shoulders, and on the back there with these spikes on it. So this is a pretty cool model as well. You do see a couple of uh, mole lines, but they, um, or the, you know, where they put the parts together. I guess the tail was a separate part, but they kind of covered it up. Oops, if it will focus again. They kind of covered it up by making, you know, the tail scaled. And this just looks like the end of a scale there. And here you can, I'm not entirely sure if it's even multi-part, to be honest. I think the head has a line there, but it's uh, it's covered up really nicely. I, I think this is a multi-part miniature. So everything comes pre-assembled, which is great as well. That's a plus. But they managed to hide all of the uh, assembly lines, the different parts, with clever sculpting. So very well done, kudos for that. All right, so that's the troglodytes. That's the first tray. And then there's a second tray with uh, still some monsters and the heroes as well. So let's start with the rest of the monsters there. So we have these skeletons. I really like these. I like the fact that they have, you know, a little bit of an exaggerated skull with the big angry looking eye holes. And uh, they still got some some clothing and some armor on, which is uh, half decayed. You can clearly see their boots. They got these big shoulder uh, shoulder pauldrons with spikes and a little buckler there. 
and a broken sword. Very rusty, no doubt. And you can clearly see, you know, still some detail on the pants there. There's a belt. So I'm really digging the detail on these figures. It's really well done. And the Kickstarter was pretty cool. They just kept unlocking new stuff, so the value was really high. And you can still get this if you missed out on the first Kickstarter by going to their Lasting Tales Kickstarter, which is currently live. And then you can get the Season 1, Series 1 and 2 of the Fantasy Series, plus the Series 1 Horror boxes. So here we have some Knolls. Wielding a spear, also quite muscular, with a bit of armor on the shoulders, some kind of mask, it looks like, on the shoulder. It's got the manes there in the neck, a loincloth, some wrappings around the shins, and the spear. So yeah, that's also a really nice looking model. So that's five gnolls. And we've got some zombies. So there we go. Um, five zombies. Human, it appears. And they've got some uh, guts hanging out there. <laughs> Shambling towards you with the uh, crooked feet <laughs> that you see often when you know, you see zombies also in, in series and movies just shambling forward on their broken bones. Looks really nice. Relatively simple figure, but still, you know, there's plenty of detail. Okay. They kind of have the exact same size as the zombie side zombies. So if you need more zombies, just toss in your zombie side stuff. <laughs> All right, here is some orcs. We've got five of these as well, wielding an axe in an upward position. So like they are on guard and uh, ready to strike with a nasty snarl on their faces. And again, some armor, loincloth, some knee pads and large boots with some fur. There is a war horn there on their belt. So they can bloat to call in some reinforcements. You can see the fur here from the, the loincloth underneath the belt. Or maybe that's the bottom of their shirt, I don't know. There's a, an edge of fur there. And there's some fur on there elbows as well. Yeah, long hair. So, that's pretty cool. The orcs. And of course, with where, where there's orcs, there's goblins. So we have these cool looking little goblins as well with a sword. Pretty nasty looking sword. Small but deadly. And they are also equipped with uh, some kind of sash around their chest. That there's a bow on their back. See that? So they also have a bow. They can fire arrows. Um, do they actually have a quiver? I'm not spotting a quiver. That would have been cool. It's a pretty tiny model, so uh, not a lot of room for a lot of stuff, I guess. But they're pretty nice. Menacing pose. All right. So there's five of those as well. And then over here we have the heroes. So let's start over here. This is pretty cool. So let's see. I don't know if they're named at all, but this looks like a halfling, um, well, a rogue or a warrior. It's a pretty big sword for a halfling. 
So it could be a warrior. Uh, it's got a backpack with some scrolls in there. Maybe just some uh, provisions. So yeah, that's the halfling. And that is on the bottom of the box. So if I just take this out. I... All right, so this is also a small guy. So it could have been a gnome too as well. So I don't know. There are, there's no female gnomes in here. There's a male gnome rogue, so that's this one then. The male gnome rogue could just as well pass as a halfling, I think. Who has a dagger and a short sword. Wearing uh, some leather clothing. With a cape or a cloak. With a hood. Nice detailing there. This is a nice pose too. It's easy, you know, ready to strike there. Okay, so what have we here? This looks like a cleric wielding a warhammer, you know, raising a fist to cast a spell, no doubt. So let's see. Yeah, that's the male human cleric. So, you know, wearing some kind of regalia, a long cape. He's got some armor on the shoulders and the arms, the upper arms, there on the elbows and on the lower arms. So his entire arms uh, are armored. So he's probably wearing more armor underneath this. So kind of looks like uh, a crusader, you know, like with full armor and this cloth over it. Because you can see here again, the armor on the leg to the feet. So he's wearing full armor, it seems. It's pretty nice. It's got the Mjolnir-like <laughs> warhammer and, and raising a fist as if casting some kind of clerical spell. So yeah, I like it, I like the pose. And then, what's this? This looks like a warrior. Human, female human barbarian, all right. And uh, wearing two battle axes. Wielding two battle axes, I should say. And um, she's got some shoulder armor on. And um, otherwise, she's got some, you know, bits of armor. She's wearing um, heavy boots and some shin protection. Oh, come on, stay focused. There we go. There's some shin protection there. And um, the rest seems to be some kind of leather armor or something. Some vest that she's wearing. Because she needs to be mobile and agile, being in melee combat, wielding those two axes. And she's, uh, she's got her mouth opening and a, and a shout, uttering a war cry. Yep, so that is the female barbarian. Then we have what looks to be a elf. A sorceress, perhaps? Let's see. The female half-elf wizard, according to the box. Could be, uh, you know, an elf as well. Whatever you want it to be. And, uh, yeah, she's got this staff with a flaming head, which is pretty cool. And a uh, billowing cloak. Long hair, walking forward slowly, also raising his fists as if to cast a spell. And I like how all of them have different poses, you know, nothing too odd or strange. Just a pose that you might take when 
you know, being a fantasy character going into battle. Looks nice. Nice details on the face. Okay, moving on. This looks like a, pa uh, yeah, a paladin. Uh, let's see, if, is there a paladin? Yeah, a male elf paladin even. Yeah, he does have pointy ears. And a really nice shield there. Nothing too fancy, but just a little bit of sculpting on there. Which is cool. It's not too big either. Some of these paladins figures that I've seen have this huge elaborate shields which seem unwieldy. Looks nice on a miniature of course. But this seems to focus more on the realistic fantasy characters which I like. You know it's more appropriate for RPGs uh, like D&D or Lasting Tales. <laughs> Because I do like, you know, I've got Reaper Bones miniatures as well, but a lot of those are a bit over the top. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you just want to have a party that, you know, looks the level that they are. And you start a new group with some low-level equipment, you can go walking around looking like, you know, uh, some kind of super hero. So here is a female monk. So let's see what that is. A female elf monk, it says on the box. Can we spot an ear? Yes, there is a tiny pointy ear. I don't know if you can see that, but on the left, on her right side of the head. And um, again, in a nice monkish pose, raising one leg to kick both fists, both hands, ready to strike or to deflect. That's pretty cool. And uh, just wearing some uh, cloth clothing, because monks, of course, need to be very mobile. So, yeah. Again, good pose. Nice and a realistic look. So that is the female elf monk. And I also like that they kind of took, you know, the non-standard... Well, of course, the paladin is pretty standard, but... Uh, you know, there's a female barbarian that you don't see that much. And uh, like, you know, halflings and and, um, and uh, gnomes. And here is a ranger. So this is a half-orc ranger. Which is also something you don't see a lot. Half-orcs in a party. Or at least you don't see a lot of miniatures of those. You really have to specifically look for them. And um, they kind of, you know, Blacklist try to fill in those gaps a bit. Because everybody, you know, if you're a collector of miniatures or a painter, everybody has the standard D&D uh, &D parties. You know, the, the elf ranger and the dwarf cleric or warrior and the human barbarian and the uh, what have you. The, the halfling rogue and they kind of you know went a different way which I like and they are doing the same with fantasy series too I checked the Kickstarter and I did see a lot of characters there that you know I don't have yet so again really nice detail I haven't commented on this figure yet but uh, as you can see he's you know drawing his bow he's actually got an arrow in the sculpt which is also something you don't see a lot and uh, the bow looks nice. It looks like a nice size for a long bow. He's got a cloak, a cape, got some shoulder armor. He does actually have a breastplate and some uh, leg plates as well. So he is moderately armored for a ranger. But I guess that comes with being a half orc. <laughs> so then we've got a dwarf here. So what is the dwarf? According to the box, it's a fighter, so that's just a, a dwarven warrior, a fighter, with a, a large buckler and a hammer, which dwarves often wield. He's got a big cape covering most of his back, well, pretty much all of his back, but underneath you can see 
He's wearing some armor and the clasps of the cape on his chest there. And the big boots and the shin protection. So he's pretty heavily armored. Looks nice. He's got his beard. It's not a big beard. He's got a long mustache, a braided mustache, and some furrows on his forehead. So yeah, also nicely detailed. He's, he's not in a very dynamic position, but you know, he's a dwarf, so he's, he's pretty, you know, steadfast. He's just standing there, swatting away the enemies. All right, so lastly, let's see what this is. This also looks like a gnome, perhaps. Let's see, a female. Um, halfling. Oh, well, we had the halfling bard, which I think then was that one, because neither of these... Oh, actually, yes, look here. She's, she's wearing... She's carrying a harp under the arm there. Okay, so this is the bard. So that means that this is the Dwarf Druid. Oh, it's a female Dwarf. Interesting. Female Dwarf Druid. Let's see if I can spot any Druish uh, details there. Well, there's a scroll strapped to the back, which could indicate some spell casting. There's some fur on the feet, on the legs, and on the shoulders, instead of, you know, uh, well, there is some armor. I was going to say instead of armor, but there is some armor there. And you're used to seeing druids with staffs, and this one has, like, a club or a shalala. Could be. And also one hand is free for spell casting. So yeah, those are the heroes. There's ten of those over here. And they look pretty nice. I really like the detail on all of these. And uh, the monsters are cool. There, there are some generic monsters. These are the most basic kind of monsters. You know, orcs and goblins and kobolds. We got gnolls, we got troglodytes, giant rats, worms, uh, gargles or imps and oozes, spiders. So if you're looking for some basic mobs and some basic uh, monsters, then this is a really good set. It's got five of just about everything you need and uh, ten quite different heroes, which is nice. But uh, let's take a look in the stretch goals box. So here's the stretch goals box and it's a lot bigger than the core box. Let me just grab the core box here. So. If I put this in the corner here, you can see there's some space there and some space there. So it's bigger and uh, it's a lot taller as well. It's a huge box. So just plain black. There is some detail of a figure here and here. It looks like a werewolf and a dwarf with axes. But it's very faint, you can barely make it out. And uh, sides are the same. And on the back we have some really cool art. <laughs> of a, uh, this looks like a troll actually. And a bar tender. <laughs> and a uh, gnome wizard, female. And a orc warrior, or paladin even. So let's open up this box and see what we get. Okay, now, one thing I did do is try and fit this box inside a Kallax, and it doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. It could have, you know, if there was five millimeters off of each side, which I, I can see now would have been possible, because the tray actually doesn't take up that much space, then it would have fit. So that's a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> but, well, it's a, it is a big box with lots of minis, so let's just take a look. All right, oh, look at all those minis. And there's a lot of trays in here. This is, I mean, I'm guessing four or five trays, which is really cool. Well, it's going to be a long video. <laughs> so we have, what is this? Actually, I don't know if there's a list in here. Let me just 
I'm just going to quickly take out all of the trays. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh, huge, huge minis and huge dragon. So there's three trays, but this is enormous. And it comes with Lurker cards, which is great for Altar Quest, which is also a game by the Saddler Brothers, Blacklist Games. And um, they can, uh, yeah, they, they all, that also came with miniatures, of course. And uh, they use Lurkers as kind of like the wandering monsters. So these cards should tell us what everything is. So we've seen, we've seen the goblins in the core box seen the kobolds with the sling and the dagger, the orcs with the raised axe, the zombies with the guts hanging out, the troglodytes, the gnolls with the spears, the giant rats, the giant spiders, the skeleton uh, imps, so I was right there, imps, and the ooze, and the giant worms. So, okay, so these are just for the cards, for the monsters, in the core box. Well, oh, that's that's sad. I would have liked to have seen, you know, cards for these things as well, but I guess they're not, no, they're not included. That's a bit of a shame. So, well, I'm just gonna have to guess what everything is. So, this looks like a small, either flaming or fluid kind of serpent, because it's clearly a serpent. It's got scales and this uh, these scales on the chest, the belly. So I was thinking first of a water weird something, but uh, then they probably would have made it blue. So I don't know, it's some kind of elemental serpents, I guess. And of course, depending on how you paint it, it could be any kind, it could be a flaming serpent. But uh, looks really nice. I like this uh, clear plastic. All right, so we've got five of those. We, we get five of everything, basically. Now, these also look like imps, but again, could be gargoyles. They're a bit small. So uh, more of these, they look different from the ones in the core box. They're pretty nice. They're hunched down, ready to jump or fly. Lots of detail on the wings, thick leathery wings and a little tail there. Liking the horns. So yeah, five of those. We get this uh, boar, just a wild boar with giant tusks there. Nice detail on the fur. Big head. That's pretty cool. So yeah, a wild boar or a dire boar perhaps, although it's a bit small, I think, to be a dire boar. This looks like a regular, just biggish <laughs> boar. So there's that. Then we have a giant beetle. That's pretty cool, giant beetles with their uh, mandibles raised up. Big front legs and small hind legs. So it looks like they could grab you and then, you know, grab you and then bite you. And maybe they're raised up like this because they spit. They might be spitting acid or something. So yeah, it's a nice model. Uh, usually the beetles that I have, they're just flat on the ground with short, equally long uh, legs. But this looks nice and different. So again, you know, I like the effort they put into making sculpts that are just, you know, not the basic kind of monster. So this looks like a banshee or a white or even a ghost. You can use them for all kinds of stuff in blue transparent plastic, which looks really nice. And, uh, you know, the face, I don't know if you can see it at all with this light and the transparency, but I guess it comes through 
enough that you can see that the mouth is open, the face is angry, angry snarl, maybe she's screaming, a blood curling scream. Then we have this, uh, this mechanical golem, this automaton, which also looks nice, or a clockwork golem or something, or a steam golem. Kind of looks, yeah, I, I, I'd say it's a steam golem, some kind of construct. It has the pipes here, you know, where steam could vent out. And the, uh, the armor with the slots through which you would be able to see some uh, fires burning, perhaps. Or some magical blue glow or something. So yeah, also looks nice. And we got five of those as well. Then we got some mummies. Hee <laughs> hee. Classic mummy. You know, just <laughs> just a mummy. There's nothing really special about that. But again, a nice shambling pose. The arms stretch out as mummies do. The mouth is open. So yeah. I mean, it's uh, simply a, a, a cool sculpt. Really nice would go well in a game of hero quest as well i guess now what's this this looks i don't know it looks like a draugr or something it does look zombie like but it's wearing a lot of armor or at least some kind of clothing with with i don't know is that fur or is that just decaying cloth it's wearing a helmet with uh, long hair coming underneath. So it does look like the Draugr from Skyrim, for example. It looks human. So yeah, some type of undead. And then, oh, more skeleton warriors. And this one is pretty armored. So, you know, looks like a revenant. This could be a revenant. It's got huge armor. There's just a lot of armor there, just a little skeleton head popping out there. And uh, yeah, you know, this billowing, tattered looking cape. And a huge sword, two handed sword, raised to strike. Looking really cool. All right, so we got five of those as well. Okay, so those were these, and that leaves us with the heroes in this tray. Uh, so yeah, let's see. And this time we don't have a list, so I'm going to have to just look at this. This has pointy ears, so this is definitely an elf or perhaps a half-elf. A male with a dagger and a cloak, so it could be a rogue or a thief. You know, an elvish or a half-elf rogue is pretty cool. Also something you don't see a lot. With leather armor, leather knee pads, leather arm guards. It's got some pouches there, some small daggers. So yeah, definitely some uh, rogue vibes from this guy. Oops, stay focused on the mini, please. So yeah, that's a nice model. Up next, we've got, oh, look at that. A Draconic Warrior. That is something else. I don't think I have a, oh, at least, well, it's dragon kin. It doesn't have wings. So I don't know, there's different kinds. There's like Draconians and what have you. There's different types. But this one clearly does not have wings, but does have a uh, very, you know, uh, reptilian, dragon-like looking head. A huge shield there. See, this is a kind of like a bigger shield, still not too extravagant, but it's it's big. But you know, this is a draconian. He can he can wield this no problem. They're they're immensely strong, and he's got you know. Some heavy armor on as well, wielding, I don't know, that's, that's like 
a large dagger or or a kind of I don't know some kind of strange looking blade not your typical sword but yeah really really cool model then we have the male monk and this looks like a regular human so this is kind of like standard human monk again a nice uh, striking pose ready to strike with long braided hair so this is kind of like the classic monk so there's that one also nice then we have so this looks like a human cleric or well it could be a paladin wielding you know a flail because he is heavily armored but could just as well be uh, you know you have these flails that also burn incense kind of like you know that they use as a weapon as well I'm thinking it's just a plain flail, but you could you could you know easily make this a cleric as well with some kind of you know godlike symbol on there on the shield. Again, a pretty big shield and big pauldrons, and and this is definitely one of the heavier armed figures. But uh, yeah, some kind of paladin, possibly a a um, cleric looking good again plenty of detail on the armor there as you can see all right so then what do we have next this looks like a tiefling uh, it focuses there we go horns on the head wearing a hood and um, plenty of armor Really cool looking armor. It's got a tail as well. And uh, some kind of wicked looking blade. You know, wielding backhand like a dagger in just one hand. So this could be, you know, a tiefling warrior or an assassin or something. Pretty cool. I really like the armor on this one. It also reminds me of something out of, you know, like Oblivion or something. Video game. Okay, let's move on. This uh, looks to be... Hmm, there's pointy ears, but rather small. So, no, no, this could be an elven warrior female elven warrior could possibly also be like a half orc female warrior you know there's no tusks so i'm you know i'd sooner say this is a an half elf with uh, leather armor it seems with some leather straps like uh, gladiators um what is that? <laughs> Gladiator's armor. Some fur on the uh, shins there and on the shoulders. Wielding two short swords. Gladiuses. So yeah, we have that. And here is another demonic looking spell caster so another tiefling a male this time i believe the other one was female and uh yeah looks like a sorcerer some kind of spell caster because there's no weapons at all just a long coat a nice looking coat with some pouches here and there no doubt for spell casting materials and uh yeah i mean again nice nice detail on the face and then the pointy ears and the horns it's uh 
smiling. I like that. He's got this evil look, but smiling. A really mischievous looking uh, kind of character, like a chaotic, neutral hero. <laughs> There's one here as well. So what do we have here? Come on, focus. There we have. There's a female, I'm guessing human. Uh, what could this be? Could be anything, really. It's got a long uh, coat as well, long hair. Um, just some boots. Some arm guards. And that's pretty much it. There's a small dagger on the belt. So this could also be a rogue or a thief, but could just as well be a spellcaster, just not very visible and just not very plain to see. This would be anything. It could be an NPC too, you know. Of course, all of them could be. But most of these are looking like they're engaged in battle somehow. This one isn't. This just could be, uh, you know, like a, a bandit or a highway woman. So that's cool. All right. What do we have here now? This guy looks like a druid. This guy has the sickle-shaped staff. Uh, it is an elf. It's pointy ears there. And, um, you know, casting a spell, it seems. And there's a scroll on the belt there. There's some small vials on the belt as well, and a pouch. So, um... I'd say this is an elven male druid. Also, nice looking figure. Ah, uh, here is someone either casting a spell from a book or telling a capturing story. Looks like a uh, human gentleman with a nice cloak with some fur. And, uh, yeah, it looks like he's got some fancy clothing on and uh, some nice high boots. Uh, the big pouch there, so, you know, indicating that he's probably got a lot of money there. He's rotund as well, so, yeah, life's been good to him. He might be, you know, he might be a mayor of a town. Uh, he does have a necklace with some bones and a skull. So, I don't know. Could be dabbling in some dark magic. Maybe that's how he got so rich. Doesn't look like a necromancer to me. I mean, doesn't look pretty too evil. But he could be. He could well be secretly a necromancer. But he is casting a spell or reading, just reading something from a book. Looks nice. And finally, we have... What looks to be some kind of, you know, draconian or kobold uh, sorcerer or a high priest. A kobold high priest with the ritual um, sacrificial dagger. Clawed fingers. That's pretty cool. This could be, you know, like a kobold matriarch or something who is the smartest of them all and can actually cast some spells that require sacrifice. Yep, she's also a bit bigger than the kobolds from the core box. So that would, you know, be really cool. So some of these could well be, you know, used as bad guys as well instead of heroes. So that was just the first tray. That's a whole lot of minis. So let's take a look. Mm, sorry about that. Mm, at the second tray. So what do we have here? This looks like a ghoul. So yeah, this is like a classic ghoul, you know. Hunched and very muscular and uh, pointy ears. Wearing nothing but a loincloth. And, uh, yeah, you know, digging up graves and eating the dead. 
pointy teeth. Really nice sculpt. So we've got five of those. Then we've got more ghosts, it seems. Another blue transparent figure. This looks like a male, male ghost. Yeah, and I like that they also sculpted in some, you know, some wisps of whatever it is, ectoplasm, <laughs> that's kind of like billowing off of him. So he's looking very ethereal, you know, mist-like. Really like that. I don't know if that captures well on camera. But uh, it has exactly the same detail as some of the other miniatures, so the transparent plastic certainly doesn't make it lose any detail. It might just be hard to capture on film. But yeah, also, nice. Ghosts. So this big guy, so these look like... Um, come on, bugbears. Bugbears with a uh, big halberd, heavy armor, and, you know, fur. <laughs> so he really looks like a gladiator, you know, just bare-chested with these leather straps, just holding one shoulder pauldron there. And there's the straps across the chest. And there's an arm guard on this arm from metal with these uh, points on it spikes but the other arm looks like it's leather and the feet are just kind of like bandaged in with leather straps so a very gladiatorial looking bugbear there okay so these are harpies so we got some harpies here with the long claws and the big feet with the talons and the feathered wings. Nice detail on the wings there. So, yeah, harpies and wolves. Pretty big wolves. They could be dire wolves or just regular wolves, whatever you need. And I could actually use some wolves. I'm glad with these. I'm happy with these. Get five of these ferocious looking wolves. Because that's something you almost always encounter in your standard fantasy adventures when you're going into the woods. All right, so now we have some, some you know, evil looking humans, some uh, bandits or highwaymen, pirates perhaps, ready to take your money and your belongings. So they got the grabbing hand and the dagger ready to uh, to kill you if needed. He's ready to take your stuff. And he's got one knee bent and one foot stretched, so he's like ready to run if needed. It's pretty cool. And we have the werewolves. So just your classic werewolf, basically, in a classic pose even, you know. This is uh, something you see a lot. But also nicely sculpted. You can clearly see all the fur, some ripped clothing even, that's still hanging across his shoulders. It was like wearing a shirt or maybe a vest, and there's not much left of it because he tore out of that. And... Uh, Got some uh, clothing, so the rest of his loincloth or pants, whatever he was wearing. So, yep, yeah, we have those. Also nice. So that was the uh, generic monsters, so to speak. Let's take a look at the heroes or perhaps NPCs, whatever you want to make of them. So here is a uh, gnomish spellcaster, gnome sorcerer. So yeah, again, nice little miniature with a cloak and um, a book, casting a spell. He's got a goatee and a mustache. 
nice mini there. Another gnome, a female gnome warrior, I would guess, with a large two-handed battle hammer. A nice po ponytail there in the wind. Some heavy armor on. It's really cool. So yeah, gnomish warrior. <laughs> That's cool. Also something you don't see very often. So what's here? Could be another gnome because he does does not look you know stocky enough to be a dwarf. So I'm guessing a gnome. The bald head, the beard, and he's uh, ready to to fight. So uh, it kind of looks like you know could be a gnomish monk, martial artist. Also really cool. So let's see what we else what, what we have here. This is a gnomish. Well, uh, I was gonna say warrior, but that could be a rogue as well. Just wielding a short sword of some kind and um, crouched low. Got some armor on, mostly. Uh, shoulder pads and knee pads, from what I can tell, uh, the chest looks like she's wearing chain mail, a mithril coat perhaps, and there's a pouch there, so yeah, this could be a rogue or, you know, something along those lines. And then, what's this? So another gnome, I guess. It's a tiny guy. Doesn't could be a halfling, but uh, halflings are usually a bit, you know, more big boned, if you will. This looks like a really slender, muscular little guy. So that might also be a, a gnomish monk. I'm guessing. Much younger than the other one. <laughs> so yeah, liking the pose on that one as well. What do we have then? Another gnome? Or perhaps a halfling? I'm sticking with gnomes. I'm thinking there's a lot of gnomes in here. With a staff and an arm in the air. So this also looks like a druid to me. A female, I think. Female gnomish druid. Though it could be a male with long hair. I mean, he's, he's fully kind of armored. I think in, I'm thinking about, you know, like that's leather armor or something. There are some straps. So you can't really tell if this is a guy or a gal. Oh, nice with the backpack and the pans and the pots and everything. So might as well be a halfling. <laughs> halfling druid. So then, another smaller model, but I'm thinking this might be a female Dwarven Cleric. She's got the shield with some kind of, you know, there's something inscribed on that that's not really clear. But uh, there's, there's something going on there. There's not a whole lot of detail in that, sadly. And she's got the uh, mace, which you often see with clerics. And she's got like a uh, some kind of item around her, some kind of talisman around the neck. Sort of resembles a cross, but could be a jewel. And there's a book and a chain. So yeah, absolutely uh, a cleric. All right, next one. Oops. This is a, I think this is the, the standard human fighter. He's got, you know, pretty set jaw there, square faced, a mighty warrior holding his two-handed sword, heavily armored. 
wheeling that broad sewed. So this is your classic human fighter. So they do also have that. And then we have, so let's take a closer look at this. This is a dwarf, I would say. And he's either costing, you know, like, uh, sure you can do something, you know, Kamehameha, like some kind of fireball he's about to hurl forward. So, you know, maybe a uh, dwarven spellcaster, a dwarven sorcerer. Because he looks too heavily armored to be uh, something like a monk or a martial artist. And he's got a cape as well. You don't see that on a monk. So, yeah, I'm thinking a dwarf sorcerer. I mean, a wizard usually wears a hat, right? Uh, so, yeah, some kind of uh, battle mage, perhaps. I like this pose. I've never seen this pose in a miniature before. I really like that. It's really like he's casting a fireball or something. Some kind of, uh, you know, elemental spell that's going to just form an orb that will fly forward into a crowd of monsters. Really cool. I dig this one. Okay, haha, <laughs> another one I like. <laughs> he's He's got a, a mug of ale. Mm-hmm. So yes, definitely a bard. There's his loot on the back. A long coat, a long sword or a rapier. That's really cool. And a mug of ale. He looks human. His round ears. So a male human bard. Swashbuckling bard. That's really nice. Nice and tall, striking fellow. Yes. Cool. And next to him is a female, I'm going to say human, because you can't really see the ears. Might be elven, but uh, I'm thinking human. Um, what shall we make of this? A warrior? Could be a warrior. She's got... Plenty of armor on. You can see, again, full armor underneath the cloth. And a cape. And again, you know, shoulder pauldrons, uh, arm guards, gauntlets. And a sort of like a spear or a um, bladed staff. So yeah, human female fighter. I'm gonna see. Also nice. Right, let's see. Haha, -ha. evildoer. So this does look like a necromancer. Skeletal face. Lots of straps of leather across the chest. Really, really cool. Casting a spell. Mouth open. Some strange looking head gear. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, the, 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 the cape, kind of like, or a skirt, I should say. And he's got a staff, which is a little bit bent, but uh, hot water treatment will fix that. With a bovine skull on it. And what looks like, you know, a little cape. Kind of looks like a bat's wings, but I think they just added a little bit of a cloth cape to the, uh, to the skull there. So it acts kind of like a banner. But yeah, I'm liking this sculpt as well. So you've got your Lich or your Necromancer. Next to that, we have another Bard. Look at that. Another Bard. This one does this. Yes, this one has, I, I guess, has pointy ears. So this is an Elven. is a lot more slender as well. It's a skinny waist. So an elven bard with a uh, scimitar and some light armor on and also a long coat. Really cool. Hm. 
Okay. And to the other side of the necromancer we have a I'm thinking a human. I'm looking at the ears. Well, it's hard to tell. This could be an elf or half elf or a human. And no weapons, just a long coat with a cape. So, um, spellcaster. Or maybe he's just someone, you know, an NPC, uh, like a baron or something. He looks pretty regal. He looks wealthy. So, yeah. Could be a spellcaster. Okay. Plenty left. So, nine of these heroes. Then we get the big guys. <laughs> so, here. This could be a dwarven berserker. You know, dwarven warrior with two axes. Dwarven barbarian, if you will. Because uh, he's bare armed. He's only wearing cloth across the chest. He's got a really big beard, braided beard across the chest. So you got your dwarven barbarian here. Double axes. Nice. Yeah, this is also a really cool looking figure. Let's see what else. Then we have uh, rather short, so it could be a halfling, could be a female dwarf again. A rogue, with the two daggers and the cloak, so definitely a rogue or a thief, whatever. With the leather armor. There's plenty of different types of characters in this box to pick for your RPGs. Now, what do we have here? This is a female human. Well, this looks like an NPC. Someone selling, you know, trinkets, chains, maybe a gypsy or just a saleswoman who's uh, offering the party some trinkets. Yep, also nice. Looks a little bit of nomadish uh, character. So we have that. So, you know, plenty of options for NPCs as well. Here we have a woman, an elf, uh, with a sword and a potion. A healing brew, perhaps, or some kind of explosive concoction that she can throw. So yeah, could be, I don't know, I, I don't think this is a warrior per se, more like, uh, I don't know, a, a battle mage or an alchemist or something. It's pretty cool. The pouch and the scrolls, all kinds of little details on the belt there. No, I like that. Okay. And then here's another, this is an elf, a male elf warrior, maybe a male elf barbarian, although he, well, he's, he's wearing shoulder armor, but the rest is just straps across a bare chest. So yeah, a male elf barbarian, I think. It's pretty cool. Or just a fighter, whatever you need. The two big cleaver swords. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, let's move on. This looks, well, it looks either like a female human or perhaps, again, oh, a half orc. Yes, this is, if I look closely at the mouth, I think I see tusks. Now that detail isn't too obvious, but I would happily paint this in green or grayish skin to make this uh, an orcish or half orcish um, fighter. 
or a rogue even because you know there she's got a small hand crossbow and a small scimitar so this might well be a half orc rogue which is also something you don't see a lot i certainly didn't have a model for that yet <laughs> so yeah nice Let's see what we got here a female human, I would guess, druid or sorceress. I'm going with druid because of the wooden, you know, curled staff. But of course, if you need a sorcerer and this sorceress, then uh, that would work. It's also a really nice looking model. Okay, then we've got an archer, a ranger, and that's a, oh, I'm trying to spot the ears, but uh, yeah, that's an elf. Pointy ears, elven, or perhaps half elven ranger. More of a classic kind of figure. Female, uh, so, you know, I think I might have one other and the rest is male, so always welcome. And again, sculpted with the arrow along the arm, ready to shoot. And I like the detail on the uh, cloth underneath. There's a little bit of, well, I don't know if it's scale mail, but it's certainly some kind of padded leather armor there with a cape. There is a quiver of arrows poking out underneath the cape, so that's good. She has a quiver. And finally, in this tray, really cool, the innkeeper. <laughs> That's so cool. This rotund man with the nice medieval hat and a tray of beer and a pint. Yes, it comes in pints. <laughs> That's so cool. Really like this one, this jovial, jolly lad bringing the drinks to the customers it's really nice it's got some uh, pouches there with some other drinks and i think that's a knife in there even <laughs> to chop up the meat or fend off the uh, rowdy customers that's a really cool model i love that all right let's move on to the final tree so here it is, the final tray in the Stretch Goals box of Fantasy Series 1 with all the huge minis. Oh. Let's start with the smaller ones, <laughs> the relatively smaller ones. Look at that. Wow. Huge, huge bear. You know, this, this could be a wear bear. Look at that face. Look at that head. Huge claws. This one, unfortunately, does show the, the lines of the separate pieces a bit better. So I guess they weren't able to hide it better with the fur. They could have, perhaps, but it would have been difficult, I guess. So this might need a little bit of fixing with some green stuff, if you, if you mind uh, this at all. And again, on a plain base, most of these do have plain bases. I do like sculpted bases, uh, but unfortunately these don't have that. They look like they are glued on. But the model is cool. It's a big, chunky, furry bear. So, yeah, <laughs> you get one of those. Cool. Then we get some elementals, and I like that. I think we have all four elements in here. So let's take a look at the fire elemental in a transparent or semi-transparent orange so he starts in a vortex here in a whirlwind of fire and then out of that pops the torso with the huge huge arms again kind of like a whirlwind of fire there's fire coming from the shoulders there and the face there is actually some detail in the face i don't know if you can see that well but um 
There is a hint of eyes and a hint of a mouth. So with some shading, you could bring that out a bit better. But that's really cool. So the fire elemental, nice and big. Here we have the water elemental in the same blue transparent plastic that we saw before with the ghosts. And, you know, big splash of water on the base and a wave just coming out of that. And I think I do see some crackles of lightning going along it. I don't know. There's something sculpted on top of the water. And along the arms, there's the face. This does have a more humanoid face. It's pretty cool. It's actually, you know, the whole shape of it is almost like a skull, a watery skull coming out of the water. Three-fingered hands. So yeah, the water elemental. Then there's the air elemental in the white transparent plastic, which looks like just swirls of air. Almost kind of like looks mummy-like, of course, but uh, swirls of air. That's what it is. It's a big, you know, typhoon or hurricane, um, cyclone kind of thing uh, with some hands coming out. And uh, there is, again, a hint of a face some evil eyes and a mouth. There's even a hint of teeth in there. Which is kind of funny. Don't know if that shows very well, but it's there. So yeah, a wind elemental, which leaves us with an earth elemental. So I guess this is the earth elemental. Yes, well, you know, it looks like a shambling mound. It's very um, plant-like. And with an earth elemental, I usually actually, I think this, <laughs> this is more like an earth elemental, but yeah, since we've got the four elements there. So this is more like the shambling mount kind of thing. You know, nature's elemental, if you will, uh, made from plants and roots and leaves. And there's some, some mushrooms growing on the back there. There's not a whole lot going on here. There's just big bushy leaves so you know from the back he's a, he's a bit he's a bit plain but uh, there's there's some nice stuff going on here there's some of the vines across the chest and the arms there's roots for hands and there's the mushroom there which i like and the weird looking head thing so it would have been nice if he had some branches sticking out from the back or something, just to, you know, to break up this big bulge of leaves. So that's that, and nature elemental or whatever. And this, this looks like an earth elemental. This looks like rock come to life. A classic earth elemental. All these rocks, that looks really cool. This is just, yeah, classic Earth Elemental, really cool. So all the four elements plus an extra one, if you count the nature one. So that's pretty nice, really cool. Then we've got, what's this? This is a, I'm guessing a troll. A very muscular troll. He's got the uh, big feet. And uh, he's got a loincloth and long hair that goes over his back. And uh, yeah, he's just a big troll-like dude. He's got some pustules there on his shoulders. Big nose and the tusks. So yeah, large troll. And we have this big, well, is it a naga? I don't know. I don't know what this is. If anybody knows exactly what this is called, please comment. Uh, so it's like this big monstrous cobra with a um, demonic face. And there's not much else to say about that. Most detail is here. 
you know, you've got all the ridges here on the belly and the face, of course, and these spikes along the sides and the spikes along the back and the rest of the body is pretty plain. You can, you do have some scaling. It's, it's not too detailed, but it's just enough to make out. So when painting, thin your paints on this one, because otherwise you will lose all that detail there. So yeah, strange looking beastie. <laughs> then this giant ogre, I'm guessing. Could be just a giant. Well, that's a giant. So this is a, this is, is going to be an ogre with a big club. Huge, you know, massive body. Big belly and big muscles. And the small skulls around the neck. He's a man-eater. So yeah, really cool model. Just your classic ogre. Brr. He's a very big, chunky looking ogre, you know, compared to Warhammer ogres, they're like this big, well, this big. They come to up to his shoulders, a little bit below the shoulders, I guess. So this is a nice looking big ogre. So then we've got a huge demon, you know, just a huge demon with a living demonic sword. I like that sword. Look at that with the eye in it and almost like veins or whatever it is. It's a big demonic sword and he's holding a, another demon skull, you know, no, actually it's just a head. <laughs> it's not even a skull. It's just a full head. It just ripped some poor lesser demon's head off <laughs> he's got you know his mouth open huge lower uh, fangs there the big horns very muscular and huge you know thick legs and then feet compared to his chest that's that's quite bulky and the big big wings look at that so you know some kind of hellish overlord. Really, really cool. Ultimate bad guy from hell. So, okay, the two largest ones remain. So let's start with the giantess. That is a cool model. And just to show you how big she is, I'm gonna grab, uh, let's grab the, uh, the bard here. So if I put the bard on her base, you can see he comes up to her knees and this is a tall human. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Puny human. So that is really cool. Really nice. Go this just a really, really large female giantess with uh, the, well, the tree <laughs> as a club. Though it does, you know, come a little bit too narrow to be just a tree stump. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what else could it be? With the dreadlock kind of hair, with some ornaments in it. Really nice. It does look like she's uh, wearing some kind of clothing that has been, you know, fashioned with the leather belts and the rings on it and uh, this buckle and uh, you know the the top with the stitches and everything nice and equally spaced so you often see giants wearing like whatever they can find you know stuff that was made by humans it doesn't look like giants tailor stuff for themselves to wear or smith well maybe smith you have the 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 D, &D kind of giants uh, that have the armor, you know, like the fire giants and the ice giants. But the the regular uh, giants, they often look like they're wearing like pieces of a ship, you know, for armor. It's just wood or a tent or whatever. Just piece, piece stuff that they pillage, that they just take from humans. I like that as well. But of course, you know, why not? If, if ice and fire giants can forge their own armor and have really cool looking 
armor and, and clothing, then why not? It's just really chunky, big model. Really like it. You know, put that on the table and watch the heroes run. <laughs> and then finally, the dragon. Wow. Big model, really nice. I mean, whew, that's, that's a huge model. Really cool. Not as big as the Joan of Arc dragon, but certainly in the size of the uh, Arena the Contest dragons. The, the, the one that comes in the base game is smaller than this. And there's new dragons coming out, so uh, I think they're on par with this one. It's really, really cool. Look at that. All the, the leathery detail and wings. It's nice. He's got huge spiky scales. So lots of detail and, uh, you know, exaggerated um, scales there, which, which is nice. He's got a, a bit dog-like snout, almost, with the, <laughs> the doggy nose. But, uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, he's, he does have a uh, bit of a canine head. So, he does look menacing, but sometimes dragons have a more, like, draconian, lizard-like head. Which, I think, looks more menacing. This looks a bit more classical fantasy dragon, if you will. But I like it. I do like it. There's a little bit of sculpting underneath. It's a bit flatter underneath here, but it's still, it's there and it's visible. So yeah, nice big chunky dragon. Just unfolding his wings, you know, it's just like he's had them on the back and just folding him out, just getting up from off of his hoard of gold to either fly away or attack. It's cool. It, it, it is a really nice model. It's nice and solid and chunky. And there you go. That's everything that's in the box. And so that was my unboxing of the Fantasy Series 1 by Blacklist Miniatures. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And please also consider becoming a Patreon Saint to my channel by clicking the link in the description below or the Patreon icon at the end of this video. And there you can read how you can support my channel and get your name in the credits and have access to some ex exclusive videos as well. And it's of course very much appreciated, it really helps me uh, making videos. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.